only son. He lives. The tainted blood of the mother. The traitor prince. The Laxerai. He sought Vlakit's head in a geek ploy for her throne. Listen close. The Empress spoke only in half-truths. For you to know the tale of Orpheus, you must know the tale of Gith and of Vlakith. Long ago, when we rose up against our gay slavers, Mother Gith made for the Hells to secure an alliance with the Archdevil Tiamat. Tiamat gifted the Githyanki our red dragons. Gith remained in the Hells, and Tiamat's envoy proclaimed Vlakith our ruler. The first Vlakith of many. It is Vlakith 157 whom my people now call Queen. Orpheus was, is, Gith's renegade spawn. A gay thrall who would return us to our slavers. He convinced his own mother's honor guard to join a coup against Vlakith One. He would have fed our empire to the Illithids had he succeeded. It was Kithrak Voss himself who slayed the prince in vicious battle. Or so the Varshis teach us. Yet the traitor's with us. Controlled by that repugnant Illithid. Should Orpheus go free, he would hand Vlakith's dominion to his Geich masters. The astral plane would be first to fall. The others would soon follow. We find a way to enter the prism and slay Orpheus. He is a Geich puppet cloaked in Githyanki skin. ...and the most powerful mind master known to my people. One word from his scheming lips and the people would doubt. Two words and they would rage. Three words and they would bow to the false prince. The Githyanki would be slaves once more. And one by one, the plains would fall to the Geich. What about him? Chuck! I'm embarrassed you'd fall for such an obvious trick. You probably believe the Illithid twaddle about Vlakith usurping Gith's throne as well. The Astral Prison contains not one, but two atrocities. They will use you and abuse you at every opportunity. There is one truth, Vlakith's truth. Everything else is apostasy. As loathsome as it is, the Emperor slipped one fact into its slurry of lies. Orpheus can disrupt a gay hive mind. One talent of many that drove the Illithids to enthrall him. The Prince is a powerful shield and a powerful weapon. Vlakith was no fool. Why destroy a weapon like that when you can contain it in a relic and keep it for yourself? Orpheus's honor guard, loyal to the end. ...and trapped by Vlakith in the same prism holding their prince... ...fruitlessly hacking at the sphere that contains him. So loyal, so beguiled, they were blind to his treason. The Honor Guard's deaths were inevitable... ...as is the death of their gay enthralled prince. My queen would demand I slay her greatest enemy. I could not be more certain. Vlakith has a plan, and she knows what part I must play. And she cannot reward me if I hand the Empire to the illithid thrall called Orpheus. Protocol 301. Neither death nor undeath may be a hindrance to Vlakith's blessing. Vlakith will know my unfaltering faith. Neither death nor the Absolute will keep me from accomplishing my duty. 
fine with me. It also promises to break us beyond repair. This ossified parasite does not make us more, but less. There will be ice where once there was fire. There will be a void where our souls once resided. I know, and I won't. I'm listening. Pleasure more carnal than the smell of a fresh kill. One day, I will achieve ascension, and I will revel in the psalm sung in Flacket's court. Until then, you will be my ecstasy. Hmm. So, there's been a mind flayer inside the artifact, or astral prism, the whole time we've had it. Sounds like utter madness, even though I've seen it with my own eyes. The more I learn, the less I understand just why I was sent to retrieve that thing. But it matters little now. I do not serve Shah anymore, nor the Mother Superior. The prism is no longer my mission. Saving my parents is. But I digress. Did you want something? Of course. I suppose you've earned it.
future, what fear? My parents are alive, and I need to save them. I'm lucky to have you by my side. I don't think I could face what's to come otherwise. 